Hello everyone. What we have uh, here today is an Auric Atmos and um, yeah the 48k Auric Atmos. This is the successor to Auric 1 um, back in 83 if I remember this right. Uh, there is a key missing and condition uh, is not great um, and I've been told that th th this this machine is dead so I have to do some initial checks and um, see if, if we have uh, any chance again today together here that um, uh, there is any chance to fix it so I'm plugging in the power um, more about the power uh, in a while and uh, I can see that we have nothing on channel 36 so it's really dead now I believe the main difference between the uh, Auric 1 and Auric Atmos uh, later on was a true keyboard you can see that Auric 1 uh, used to have this uh, rubber keyboard which is similar to the ZX Spectrum uh, which was not very accurate or uh, reliable in any case And if I remember this right, there was uh, the Auric ROM version 1 on this machine uh, and then in uh, Auric Atmos uh, version 1.1 1 .1, uh, was used as the upgraded version. Atmos needs uh, around 9 volts, um, standard um, voltage uh, coming from whatever, I'm not using the original part. Um, as a power supply today, I'm just using one of my own for at uh, one amp, um, and I think it's around 10 the output that I get. Um, so it needs a standard um, around 9, 9.5, 10 um, DC input, and I'm I can only assume that um, it's it can uh, drop it down to five, like uh, all the machines of that era used to uh, by the use of some voltage regulator or we'll see uh, inside uh, what is happening um, I have uh, removed the screws so we can open it in a while together here um, yeah and see uh, if uh, there is a problem take some measurements if there is a problem with uh, voltage uh, and all that at the back you can see uh, printer port, expansion port, the power, classic uh, UHF and tape but also RGB 5 DINs um, um, outputs so let me uh, remove the case and um, start looking at the yeah the, the, uh, the heat uh, it's so hot you cannot imagine and it was just uh, powered for one or two minutes it's very hot I believe this is not normal uh, and the heatsink is very small in the case of Ad Atmos uh, I read about it um, several times uh, people uh, used to complain and uh, shaking head uh, about the size of the heatsink but um, the the thing now is we need to get some measurements I'm gonna uh, steadily put the uh, negative or the ground uh, joint a point uh, from my multimeter and power up the machine and try with the positive to get some positive uh, indication from the multimeter and see how it flows the if the something flows actually it doesn't look this way uh, around the circuit so I'm playing around with uh, standard some standard um, points that we can uh, test like the IC's um, 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 ULA uh, and the um, ep the ROM, uh, the processor, and everything, but mostly around the pins of uh, the regulator itself. I can see no indication of any um, voltage uh, current uh, flowing around, and I assume the machine gets no power at all. So uh, it will be an easy fix if this is all we can get. It's so hot you cannot imagine. Damn, it's so hot. Um, 
we, we will be lucky if uh, just the uh, 7905 fails and we have to replace it. The 7905 uh, stabilizes minus 5 volts, but uh, 7805 stabilizes uh, the plus 5 volts, and this is the main difference. You can also check the pin out, the difference uh, of the pin out uh, for both of those here. Right, so first things uh, first. Um, the heatsink um, needs to be removed. I will check if there is any, by any chance, uh, I have a bigger one. But this uh, space, the space that we have um, here, is very narrow. I don't know if um, I can um, install a bigger one. But um, first step is to replace the 7905 and see if. if Now going underside, uh, we can see some corrosion. I have removed the uh, the regulator al already. Uh, I need to clean the whole PCB as um, much as I can with some alcohol, starting with the regulator uh, connection points and moving around uh, the whole board. Now we have we have uh, the regulator uh, replaced. This is the new 7905, and I'm checking the voltage. Uh, I'm getting quite some high indication here, 13 volts. Um, one thing to remember is that the uh, positive is the core um, connection in the middle, and the outside, the internal part of the jack and the outside part is the uh, negative so this is the moment of truth I'm trying to capture the TV along with me powering this thing up crossing fingers uh, and I hope this will be all the damage with voltages uh, can travel uh, around the circuit and I hope we can avoid this today we ha yes we have a signal booting up, uh, initializing and getting to the screen and the cursor is blinking and everything looks okay so the, the, the of course the heatsink got already hot but not that much like um, before again I'm gonna do this again, I'm gonna run the same test again, booting up initializing and uh, we have a signal so okay I'm very pleased with this it looks like we saved the system, we saved uh, a 35 year old system and I'm very happy and glad. I have found these uh, two old um, 7805 or whatever that is uh, with uh, heat sinks on because I have removed them pr obviously with the heat sinks on in the past and uh, I was thinking maybe I can do a little mod here because I do not trust um, the heatsink that uh, the original heatsink that the Atmos has so I was thinking I could place another one inside there somehow uh, if it fits so I'm gonna make it uh, a bit uh, not bigger but thicker which is the idea to absorb the heat um, so let me try to remove it again and uh, before I close up the uh, computer and the session I should try to uh, do this little mod and uh, put uh, another heatsink over the existing one so it can last longer uh, hopefully over time and overheat I think I'm gonna take the black one so my idea is to put the little one inside the bigger one the bigger one is the original one that comes uh, with Atmos so I don't think that it fits perfectly but with a little help uh, using some tool or something maybe I can push it and make it and it will get thicker uh, 
with better uh, for better results. Uh, let's see. Let me push it with something. No matter what the tool is, uh, whatever tool will do. I'm just pushing the little one inside the bigger one, and then I can squeeze it back, and I think it fits perfectly. The second heatsink inside the bigger um, original one uh, looks good, and it's steady. It is um, in place. Um, the diameter of all the screw is the same for the hole, and um, we have a perfect match. Let me push it back to its original position, and uh, I think we're good. I'm gonna place it back and power up the machine again. Now before we can uh, put the computer back in the case and uh, call it a wrap, I found this solder joint here of this um, variable resistor. I think it uh, has to do uh, something, some, some kind of adjustment for the, for the picture. It's not even soldered on the other side and um, I don't know how that happened but um, let me just uh, resolder this joint this point back and then we have a clean and um, nice uh, looking uh, motherboard uh, that uh, can be pu put back in place with the extra heatsink uh, we have placed uh, inside the original one and call it a wrap now uh, this is a good chance to see that this is actually a Nordic 1 uh, machine um, but with upgraded ROM uh, from version 1 uh, to version 1.1 used for the uh, Atmos plus the keyboard. Now we can uh, play uh, with this variable resistor uh, which is uh, marked as uh, RV1 or VR1 in any case a variable resistor 1 uh, moving it around uh, left or right uh, gently you can see that the image gets sharper or uh, softer so y you, you have to find the, the best um, signal you can uh, get and uh, leave it there in its final position I think this one is looking good for me, not too dark, not uh, too distorted and not too uh, light, so I think we're fine. I'm very pleased with this uh, repair today. Um, somehow I never um, used an Auric uh, machine when I was younger. Uh, this is the first one I got uh, recently from eBay. and. Um, uh, I didn't have much hope um, that this will be working again. I'm just trying to uh, see that uh, the keyboard is working and actually uh, looks fine. Uh, so I'm very pleased and very happy with this. It was an easy fix um, over some uh, weird and uh, unknown machine to me at least. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, everyone uh, consider subscribing um, and I'll be back uh, with uh, other videos um, soon and trying always to um, bring back to life all the 8-bit machines that we grew up with and uh, we loved and played uh, with when we were younger and uh, bring uh, they bring uh, back memories so thanks again bye